So I would like to start just making some uh, remarks regarding uh, the policy. And uh, if you go to the to the next slide, please, you will notice uh, the the title of this slide that it is forging a different word, which I think that uh, the Canadian policy is is pretty much uh, not geared towards this. Uh, as, as it was mentioned, uh, and I was uh, surprised because I didn't get this feeling when, when I read the policy, and I was wondering why they call it uh, a feminist policy, because what I see here is a women's empowerment and gender equality policy. And uh, so having uh, said that, that this is the entry point, uh, the SDG 5 is the entry point, I think that clarifies a lot of, of, of this. Um, so what I would like to say is that this policy in reality uh, is, is really a, a very ambitious policy and it is a transformative policy and it adopts the key pillars of the SDG which are the five P's that are people, planet, uh, prosperity, peace and partnerships. And it calls for inclusiveness, no one behind, and being transformational. So this means that when you, uh, so this, this really sets the, the power of, of changing, uh, changing and forging a different work. Word. And for the point of view of the presentation that we have today and what it means uh, for, for the achievement of the goals, it represents a, an incredible opportunity for, for really integrate gender in the mainstream of agriculture and really uh, rural development. So it recognized the role that women and girls can play and can be uh, really drivers of uh, poverty reduction, food security, and also uh, to uh, the sustainability of, of those outcomes. So what I have seen in the policy is that bearing this in mind, it established the, the, the key set of pri uh, principles and areas and action that will guide uh, the, the, the aid agenda and the policy agenda for, for the next future. So as I said, it is uh, amb it's ambition and is aspirational. So what, but it's a policy, our principles. So the beauty of what, and I am going to shift to the tool, is that then the tool that was developed by Claire really is a tool that uh, is, is, is brings a, an opportunity for uh, the operationalization of this, uh, of this policy. And that's very, very interesting, and that can be an example for uh, all the, 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 the donor community, I would say. And so it's a tool that I found it really interesting with very innovative approaches in the sense that the combination of this uh, implementation dimension with uh, the management dimension that I think that the management dimension sets the basis so that the implementation can reach the objectives and what the uh, different programs and projects aim in terms of, of gender equality and women's empowerment. Uh, I found quite interesting that it is a practical and flexible tool. It can be used by different actors with different purposes for the design, for the implementation, or for the monitoring and evaluation. It can be used to assess programs, but also business models at different levels. So I think that this offers a great opportunity for, for, for uh, advancing uh, the gender equality and women's empowerment agenda in, in agribusiness. Uh, so the other issue that, that I wanted to, to mention is uh, really about the results, and that goes about uh, some things that were mentioned by Claire in, this, in, in the approach, but also by, by uh, the, 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 that are in the policy. And it is uh, the fact that uh, even the programs that are gender oriented are programs that have not, uh, that have not a transformative power. 
So uh, that uh, is, uh, let's say, uh, that shows that there is really uh, the need and substantial efforts that need to be done to be transformational at all levels. And that caused the issue of sustainability, because if the, 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 the terms of engagement are not uh, changed, uh, so it's something that uh, the sustainability can be uh, not only uh, not ensured, because you might have very successful possibilities, for example, in terms of women gaining access uh, to a better stage of the chain, but if women do not control uh, the, the resources that they gain, so it's something that might not necessarily uh, benefit uh, in the long term the, 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 the family and the households and, and, and the women. I think that one of the issues that I wanted to, to highlight is that the, the methodology and also the policy have uh, common approaches and building elements. And so it's one issue is that they move from the margin to the mainstream of the inclusive and business agenda. So that means that, that gender is at the center of all interventions. Uh, the fact that they promote uh, transformative approaches, and so it's not about women's participation in agribusiness opportunities or initiatives, but it is the changing the terms of engagement, and this is key. And, uh, and uh, the last point that I wanted to mention is the adoption of uh, both of them have a holistic approach, an integrated approach, in where, which uh, the productivity, education, skill development, health prevention of gender are integrated and are you now uh, needs to be uh, taken into consideration and needs to be tackled. The fact that the, there is a multi-level uh, approach that works at the all levels, cross-sectoral, and uh, I would like to call very much the attention to the fact that the importance of the multi-sector approach, and so having a, a multi-sector uh, holder approach, having and integrating the different actors in the chain, in the value chain, which are fundamental to ensure really a, a, a meaningful change to address the issues related to the scale and address the issues related also uh, to the sustainability. All the things that, that I have um, basically highlighted by Claire are things that we have seen uh, basically uh, reflected in the work that FAO has been uh, conducted for already almost uh, a decade. How can FAO contribute to this agenda? So I was saying that uh, a lot of the things that, that Claire mentioned uh, were things that we have uh, basically uh, see in the work that, that we have uh, been uh, uh, conducting. So one issue that I wanted to highlight is that FAO can contribute to this agenda with the evidence. We have basically a research, programs of research. We have a research component. We have actually conducted a case studies in eight countries in terms of agricultural investment. Uh, and uh, we analyzed 16 uh, investment uh, models uh, or investments implemented under different uh, type of business schools. And uh, so in terms of, uh, of, the, of the lessons that we learned, so what it was very clear is that uh, they are clear differentiate implications on women and men, and that by far women tend to be overrepresented in the group that are, uh, take less advantage of the benefits uh, that can be derived for the emergent opportunities and that when women do benefit in reality is basically when specific measures and strategies are adopted by the different uh, stakeholders in the chain so that women can benefit from that. So we have seen, for example, cases in projects, as for example in Zambia, where the investors 
uh, have given women land so that they can participate and control this piece of land. Or, for example, we have seen, uh, uh, for example, uh, programs in which uh, the entry barriers for the produce organization, and that was, for example, in, uh, in, Ga uh, in Ghana, uh, with an horticultural co company in which how important they were, the, 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 basically the, the, the criteria for entering in a producer organization. And then when they changed the criteria that could allow that no fee were paid for entering into the organization, the woman participation increased. So they are kind of specific measures that can be adopted so that uh, the, 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 the investments are more gender sensitive. Another issue that I wanted to highlight is you know, and it's a contribution that FAO can, can uh, provide is the support to uh, global processes. And this has been, for example, in the case of the CFS uh, agri uh, Responsible Agricultural Investment Process and to support the operationalization of these principles. Now we are trying to develop an umbrella program that we are uh, uh, presenting to different donors so that uh, this uh, can be implemented at the country level and uh, gender is one of the key principles of the 10 principles of implementation of, of the 10 principles of the, of the right. Another uh, area in which uh, we are working and that we can uh, fit very well in this agenda is engaging in uh, programs in a specific supply chains. And we have been conducting some work in cocoa and coffee uh, value chain. So basically, we have no work on the identification of uh, good practices at different levels, so where producer organizations, traders, companies, big, big companies. For example, we have worked with Nespresso, with, uh, um, with Lavazza, and uh, so we have been basically identifying the good practices, systematizing these uh, good practices. That means to understand what does work, how, and when, and systematizing those good practices, and then uh, cross-fertilizing those uh, experiences among sectors and among different actors within the value chain. So this is an incredible opportunity which we see that has been very powerful and we will continue to move on. Another dimension which is very important and was also uh, mentioned in, in both presentation is the policy level. So how, how to engage and how to transform and create an enabling environment for women's empowerment and gender equality w uh, within the, the agribusiness and, and value chains and economic opportunities. And so it's something in which we are working. We have uh, developed a tool for assessing the agricultural policies, uh, related policies, in a participatory manner with a stakeholder and holistic uh, approach. We have worked also, for example, in Ghana, in Malawi, we have contributed to uh, um, produce a guide for, for investors, and we are working in Malawi for uh, creating uh, some kind of screening uh, criteria for, for the investment. So these are examples of, the, of work that we are doing. So the issue of enhancing capacities, we are developing a capacity development program. This was something that was very clear as a lack of, and so this is fundamental for changing the mindset. And the last point is uh, developing innovative approaches we have developed an approach that we call the Women's Empowerment and Farmer Business Schools approach in what we have this activity at the ground level, which seeks to and pretend to uh, facilitate women's uh, access to markets and engaging in uh, agribusiness, but in a transformative way. And so this is all. Thank you. Uh, my question, one is of appreciation. I think the policy position for Canada is very clear and it's very powerful way 
and a gesture in terms of its position in empowering uh, women economically. And I think the subject in the view of the conversation on agriculture is equally very powerful and very important, uh, particularly looking at the amount of women uh, in agriculture or investing in agriculture, both as smallholder farmers as well as uh, uh, those who are doing labor, agricultural labor in the field. In terms of and probably, uh, you'll excuse me because I haven't probably had a chance to really look into the tools and how that relates into actual realities um, in terms of women, particularly the smallholder farmers and their struggles uh, in terms of securing tenure rights. Um, there is a recognition, of course, uh, and a mention of resource uh, question um, in view of the tools and how that is equally important. Uh, how did you see that probably interacting in reality in terms of both of the household um, relations or household relations between the spouse or from a tenure point perspective and this probably from the canadian point of view um, in terms of the focus on goal five is the interface of the tenure security component under under goal one of the sdgs that's tenure security indicator 1.4.2 under target 1.4 and how that interacts in reality because uh, the focus on agriculture if uh, at all we we kind of not provide adequate also mention and support of women ownership as, as well as access and control of or having secure tenure rights, it will definitely be a big challenge. So what are the experiences, uh, both and maybe the interest to focus um, on agriculture, but also giving attention to securing tenure rights as it relates to those two goals? Thank you. Yeah, okay, it's related to the question of land. Because just as a clarification, in Goal 5, actually, there is a target specifically on land rights, women and land rights, which is Target 5A. And so the Target 5A has two indicators, one that it is actually on, legal, uh, on women's legal land rights, which actually we are uh, the custodian agency for this indicator, and then there is the, the 582 indicators, which actually is data on ownership and uh, control of, of land, which uh, so FAO is custodian for both indicators, so actually are in these. And with respect, I think that uh, uh, in part of the work that we have done in the COCO and uh, uh, coffee value chain, we have very interesting approaches of how to link uh, these and good practices in terms of transformative approaches for uh, the land. And there is one in Uganda and one in Ghana in which actually in a type of, you know, in cocoa and coffee that are perennial crops, so they have managed to uh, that uh, give land to women so that they can control uh, the land and participate in in the actually in the in the chain. And I would like to just uh, uh, make a note in another different uh, thing in in two issues which I consider that are important. So uh, Claire called my attention to the fact that it appears and to mention the fair trade as a, as a driver. And actually what our research shows is that uh, the fair trade in reality has not made any difference, that fair trade actually tends to be very, very blind towards gender. And, and gender is, is really not a, a key point in the, in the fair trade agenda. And we have the majority of the cases that we have studied actually are fair trade certi certified. And they were not really performing good in gender, so it was not a, 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 a factor that made the difference. And another issue that I wanted to mention, and this is related with what uh, was uh, basically uh, highlighted uh, by, uh, I don't remember, by, uh, uh, and Rame, uh, and is, uh, is, is the fact uh, that I think that there is, it's very important, and this is what all the, uh, with the stakeholders that we have engaged, and uh, particularly with the private sector, it is uh, to build, there is still uh, the, the need to build the business case. When you have built the business case and they are convinced that it's good to invest in women and gender, they will do it. They will do it. 
And, and for example, interestingly, the World Cocoa Foundation that has come up to the conclusion that women and uh, youth uh, are fundamental for the sustainability of the cocoa, they are engaging in uh, gender and women's empowerment. And so they are starting to, to conduct and to try to understand how they can go about. So I think that it is extremely important uh, that, and you will get this, this buy-in uh, because that. I, I have noticed that we have in our participants Peter Nambini, which actually he, he works and, uh, uh, for traders, and they have been engaging in the coffee sector uh, in using household methodologies and uh, household approaches, and, uh, and they have had you know, incredible experience in that transformative approaches and change the terms and, uh, and, and they have an incredible role in providing extension services and they have noticed the difference of what it is doing with the type of traditional approaches, even taking into account women's participation in this and so adopting transformative approaches.